morning, everyone, and welcome as we worship God together. It's a beautiful spring day, and when we think of spring, we think of new life, and we give thanks that we have new life in Jesus Christ. It's great to welcome everyone here, worshiping in person and online. We want to welcome everyone as we gather together to praise God. Sharing in our worship service today, Karen Price is our music director. We'll have an anthem by our choir today. We will also have some special music by Torin Kendrick Peterson, and he will be sharing on um, some selections on the violin. All the way from Duluth, Minnesota. Great. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here today. And we just want to just say it's time to welcome everybody in the name of Christ. Let's praise God as we share together in worship. Our liturgist this morning is Richard Helmer, and he'll be playing the piano at least one song anyway. <laughs> Welcome. As a community of faith, we make connections with one another and share Christ's message of love. Welcome to all worshiping together in person and online. Please join in the worship service by sharing in the reading of bold-faced texts as you see them on the screen and sing along as we praise God together. Our theme for the season of Easter is Experiencing Miracles of Jesus. With our focus today, when we can't see our way, Jesus heals. Let us give thanks and praise to God. Please read the bulletin announcements for upcoming gatherings, meetings, special events, and celebrations. Also check out our website and Facebook pages. Thank you to everyone who helped with and supported the concert of the Watuso Children's Choir held on Friday, April the 12th. Next Sunday, our focus will be Jesus Brings Change in Time. We will also be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Baptism. 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 Oh, Sacrament of Baptism. On Saturday, April the 27th, we will be having an open house and chicken barbecue. Tickets are $16 and available from Kathy. Katie, sorry. Please see your announcements for further details. At this time, let us share in the joy that Jesus is alive. Let us greet one another with Christ's peace, saying, May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Start with the worship and opening prayer. Come all who see, are seeking the path of your light. Come all who are searching for signs of hope but cannot see the way. God's Spirit leads you to see again that Jesus is risen and that there is hope. Come all who cannot see the way of Christ but search for something in life which brings meaning and hope. Our lives are often signposts of what was before and what it is to come in faith. Jesus heals our wounds, and by faith we are healed. Come, people of faith, 
Let us rejoice and give thanks to God for raising to life our Savior, Jesus. We gather to worship in praise and thanksgiving because God calls us and needs us to be his feet and hands as we share the good news. Let us rejoice and praise God. Let us pray. Holy God of love and hope, we praise you and we thank you for the joys we experience in your presence and with those whom we call our church family. Touch our hearts and minds. Challenge us anew to see you again, but in new ways. Be with us, we pray. Amen. Let us join together in reaffirming our faith as we share in a new creed. We're not alone. We live, we live in God's, God's world. world. We, we believe, believe in God. Who has come to Jesus. We believe in God. Who has created and is created. Who has come to Jesus. The Word made flesh. To reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I'm trying to recreate, but it will not happen, the experience of the Watoto people, and they're just dancing and singing. But boy, it takes a lot of energy. <laughs> it really does. But we have to have the joy, and I think we do have the joy that brings us all together in Christ. And so let us come before God, knowing that God forgives us. Let us pray. Merciful God,
In compassion for your sinful children, you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior. Grant us grace to confess our sins, which made it needful for Jesus to be broken that we might be made whole, to be troubled in spirit that we might be given peace, to be put to death on the cross that we might be restored to life. Give us, O oh God, a true longing to be free from sin. And a true willingness to follow him who stooped to our need. And who, and who raises us up from sin to be forgiven life. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Here's the good news. Jesus Christ has conquered death for believers. Scripture re rejoices at this news, saying, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? By rising to life, Christ conquered death. We will believe are given the hope and promise of life eternal, made possible through Jesus' death and resurrection. This is God's gift of grace, offered through Jesus, his Son. Thanks be to God. Amen. We welcome Torin. Come on up and as we share together and hear some music that he's going to, he's going to share with us. for you because I think it's a really beautiful song that is one of the most famous movies from one of the most famous movies.
for your grandpa to hear you here too. So thank you, Bill. <laughs> thank you, Bill, to have. You're on a break right now. We we already had our break in March. You get an April break. Is it because you still have snow? No, we have snow. <coughs> oh, no, we didn't either. But he's on a break this week. Please take time to, to visit with Torin and his family here after at our uh, time for coffee, okay? He's on a break this week, so it's great. Thank you so much, Torin. I'm going to invite the children to come up because we have to sing some couple songs here. One that we did last week, you know, when we were laughing and going, ho, ho, ho. That's one of the ones we're going to do. <coughs> come on up, girls. Come on up there, boys. Where we clap our hands and stomp feet, okay. <clears throat> singing that one another time. Okay, I have a question. You know, what's that picture on the screen? Do you know what that is? It's a Band-Aid. Band-Aid. Do you guys have any Band-Aids on you now? Oh, you, do, you used to have one. Okay. What do you use Band-Aids for? Hurt your what? Hurt my boo-boos. That's right. You're right. That's right. Exactly. You hurt your boo-boos and you put a band-aid in it. What's the band-aid going to do? Okay, before you put the band-aid on, what do you have to do? Clean it. You're right. What do you clean it with? What? Water. Water? You just wipe it off. Water. In case there's blood, you got to get rid of the blood, right? Okay, you just wipe it off. Okay. So then you put the band-aid on top. And what's the band-aid going to do? Okay, so it's going to stop it from bleeding, and so it can heal. What does it mean to be healed? Yeah. It's fixed. I like that. It's fixed. Because when you take the Band-Aid off, what happens? What do you see? It's gone. You see nothing, right? It's back to where it was before. Because you said you, ha you used to have a Band-Aid on, right? Was it on your Are we all gone? Yeah, it's all gone? No, it's not. I'll oh, I see. okay. So there's. You had a, an, an owie on your finger yesterday? Yeah, okay. So when you're thinking about the owies and getting better, 
That's what the whole thing about healing is. So you go back to where you were before. Well, I want to tell you a story about Jesus. Jesus was, met this man who was born blind. You know what that means? What? Can't see. Very good. So he was born blind, so he couldn't see. So he lived in the, because he was born blind, and so he was raised by his parents, and he got to be old that he, he, they couldn't look after him anymore, and he begged in the streets for his, to, to live, okay? Jesus was walking along, and he says, what can I do for you? And he says, Jesus, I want to see. I want to see. Oh. So what did Jesus do? Well, Jesus, this sounds kind of funny, but he did this, okay? It's exactly what he did. Make that sound. Do that again. Do that again. Do that sound. What did he do? <laughs> like this. He got some spit, okay, and he spit on the ground, and then he used that spit and mud and mixed it up together. I know this is kind of gross, but it's, it worked, okay? So he did that, and then he made mud pies. You ever made mud pies? Yeah, you, you guys got to learn how to make mud pies. That's part of being a kid, getting mud. Okay, you already know. Okay, so anyway, Jesus made mud pies. And what he did is he took that mud. Okay, he took that mud, and what did he do next? He took that mud, and he put it on top of the eyes of the man who was blind. And then he said to him, go wash your face. Because he was all covered in mud, right? Go wash your face. And as that man went and go to wash his face, what do you think happened? He what? What do you think happened? He was healed so he could see again. That's right. He could see. He never saw before. He was blind from birth. So he could see. So he could see. So his eyes could do what they were supposed to do and be able to see. That, whole, that changed that man's life. He didn't have to big in the street anymore. And it made a big difference for what he could do every day. He could now live with his parents until he was able to get trained to learn to do what he could do and support himself. His whole life changed because Jesus healed him. When we think of the healings, that's what we're talking about is being changed physically. But Jesus heals us in a lot of different ways. When we're maybe sad, he will make him feel better. When we're upset, we'll be made better. Those are the things that Jesus does. So that's a story just for you to share and remember today. Jesus took mud pies and heal the man born blind. Let's share together in prayer. <coughs> One of those things, not to put mud on your eyes, okay? At home. I'm just mentioning that for future use, okay? <laughs> Let's pray together. God, we just want to thank you for this time. We thank you for the this this story of Jesus healing the man born blind. He could see. And we know, God, because of this, there are miracles that happen. Bless us, we pray as we continue to learn about Jesus. Amen. Okay, you know what, to Sunday school now. Okay, great.
Thank you, choir, for today's anthem. The scripture this morning comes from first letter from John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See how much the Father has loved us. His love is so great that we are called God's children, and so in fact we are. This is why the world does not know us. It has not known God. My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. Whoever sins is guilty of breaking God's law, because sin is a breaking of the law. You know that Christ appeared in order to take away sins, and there is no sin in him. So everyone who lives in unison with Christ does not continue to sin, but whoever continues to sin has never seen him or known him. Let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. Here endeth the first reading. The second scripture this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Jesus healing a man born blind. As he went along his journey, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus said, Neither this man or his parents sinned. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with a saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Here endeth the readings from the Bible today. Our second gospel reading for today is taken from Luke chapter 23. Sorry, Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading verses 36 through 48. This is Luke's version of what happened when Jesus appeared to the disciples and he shared with them. Well, they were talking about this, that is the disciples, of talking about what happened on the road, sorry, After Jesus rose from death, Jesus stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were going to see, they were actually seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet and see that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was all with you, was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending you upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. May God bless to us the readings of his holy word this day and always. Well, 
For the last couple of weeks, we've been asking that question, do you believe in miracles? But what is a miracle? We've shared those, de- those definitions. A surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws, but is considered to be a work of a divine agency. It's also defined as an extraordinary event taken as a sign of the supernatural power of God or an extremely outstanding or unusual event or thing or accomplishment. That's how we've defined it. Now the question is, what uh, is the purpose of miracles? What's the purpose of miracles? The purpose of a miracle is not to prove the existence of God, but to prove the legitimacy and the validity of an agent of God's revelation. This means that there is a change by someone whom God has sent to speak this message. The miracle helps to change and verify or legitimizes that messenger's story, telling and sharing with others. And these messengers appear both in the Old and the New Testament. Because when we think about miracle stories, we think about miracle stories of the Old Testament where God is creator or source of energy that makes things happen in life and in time. But as Christians, we turn to the New Testament to look to Jesus' miracles, not just as a challenge to our minds, but as a promise to our hearts. Because the world we want is still yet to come. The miracles of Jesus serve as a glimpse, a little bit about God, what he will accomplish in the grand universal scale when the new heaven and the new earth emerge. But in the meantime, we look at miracles and wonders of God, God's creation. This past week, I know many of us were in awe. The solar eclipse brought much discussion to people who never really paid attention to the moon and the sun before. Yet when the moon eclipsed the sun, bringing the signs of dusk at 3 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there was a sense of awe, wonder, and amazement. There was also expressed to me in different groups of people that I was with in these intervening days was how small we really are. Birds flew around in swarms. The temperature dropped. Streets and parking lights lights came on. Store lights brightened, and for a few short moments, silence. But the sound of seagulls capturing the minds and eyes of people in our region with what people have called a miracle in creation because it was one of those things you only see once in your life a full solar eclipse. Because when we think about it, no human could make this happen. And the wonder of creation and the creator emerged. I've had people with discussions this week, they said, how can one not believe in God when you see something that totally awesome? How might Jesus' message of heaven and earth become one? Surely scientists through the years have learned about eclipses and calculated when and where the 100% totality would occur in this area. But how was this possible? We can't just make it all happen. God's creation is full of miracles. And that's one type of miracle that there is. Creational miracles. God creating what we call the physical universe and its natural laws. You know that when you throw a ball up, it's going to come down. That's a natural law. We didn't make it happen. Human, that's just the way it is. That's the way it was created. And that's how we understand God's creation. Creational types of miracles. A second type of miracle are those miracles which point us to that ongoing operation of nature that allows us to exist and flourish. Jesus sustains all things by his word because he's the image of the invisible God, known to us as the person called Jesus. Sustaining miracles make what life happens to take place. Some people believe that the birth of every baby is a miracle. For when we think about it, it's not necessarily what happens, 
but the baby himself or herself that comes into existence totally unique unto itself. There are no two babies the same. Even twins are different. But every time a baby comes, in, baby comes into existence, God is saying, life is going to continue. Life is sustained. A third type of miracle is providential. That is an example of one prays for a new job and a few minutes later an email is received about this. Well, some people will say, well, is that really a miracle or a coincidence? In Matthew 17, verse 27, and I know you're going to look this one up later on, but Matthew 17, verse 27, Jesus tells Peter to go fishing. And he says, when you go and take the first fish you catch, open its mouth and you will find a four drachma coin in it. It's in there in Matthew 17, what Jesus tells Peter to do. Go fishing, get the first fish, open its mouth, and you'll find a coin. And that was to pay the synagogue tax. Was this a miracle? Well, because of the timing between what Jesus said and Peter fishing and catching the one fish with money in it, it sounds a lot like a coincidence. So you have to figure that out for yourself. Did Jesus put that fish in there? Did Jesus put the coin in there before he got and saw Peter? We don't know. But why that one fish? Predictive miracles arise from fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. A predictive miracle was experienced when accurate predictions came true, like the coin in the fish's mouth, but also when we think about our truth, that we're learning more about God power and faithfulness and omniscient presence that is being everywhere to everyone god has universal complete knowledge because miracles are not extraordinary isolated events but in a predictive understanding it fulfills prophecy we think about that the prophet isaiah stated many times that there will come a messiah there will come a Christ who will save his people. That's a predictive prophecy that took place over 400 years later in the birth of Christ. The fifth type of miracle is suspension. These appear to violate some natural law, but really suspend or stop time for a moment. Just like in our story today that I shared with the children, the man born blind from John chapter 9. What occurred in that situation was that the disciples observed a man who had been blind from birth. People asked, well, whose fault was it? Who sinned? The parents? Because that was one of the understandings of the time because people didn't understand the medical reasons why people were blind or what happened in times of birth with illnesses and sicknesses and all those things because medical t understanding just wasn't there. So they asked, who had sinned to cause this man to be born blind? And Jesus answered this question by saying, neither his parents nor this particular individual had sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. The miracle that he was about to do had been predicted well before that man, baby, was born so that Jesus could show the works of God. It just wasn't happenstance that Jesus walked by and said, oh, you're, you're the one that I'm supposed to heal. No. Jesus knew that this man had been born blind. And it was predicted that he would heal him by a miracle. Like I said, one of the things about Jesus in particular, this particular miracle, was about spitting on ground making a mud pie and just go washing his face. Did Jesus really need him to go and have, have mud on his face? No. Did he need him to go and watch at the pool of Siloam? No. But he does. And he comes back from that area where the pool is located, seeing. Jesus could have said, you can see. But he made a point of saying, taking something that's simple and understandable right there in their presence, sand, water, mixing it up, putting on the man's eyes to make it show that this is going to be something different. 
This is sown to be something big. And those neighbors and those who had seen him before begging in the street asked him if it was the same man. Yes, it is. He answers and tells them the story about what happened, that Jesus made mud pies and put them on my face. Tell, and then the thing is, the people said, well, we need to share this with others. And so they take him to the Pharisees because there was a problem with all what had happened because Jesus had done this on the Sabbath. Jesus opened his eyes of the formerly blind man. And the Pharisees questioned him. What did you say about the man who healed you? And the man said, he's a prophet. He gave me sight, which I never had before. They were questioned about how it was possible. How it was possible. So the people in the crowd and the Pharisees, they all tell other Jewish leaders to ask, when, but they're afraid because the Pharisees had already told people that if they believed this man, meaning Jesus was the Messiah, they would be put out of the synagogue. The story continues as the Pharisees asked the formerly blind man more questions about what occurred, who he believed Jesus was and what he thought. Eventually they put this man out of the synagogue because how could this happen? But amazingly enough, Jesus learns that this man, who is now able to see, needs him. Jesus goes and finds him, and he talks to them. And he says, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. And hearing those words, the man's going, what? Why did Jesus come and heal my eyes? but it was because of the Pharisees listening to what Jesus had to say. And they asked, surely we are not blind, are we? Surely we are not blind? If you were blind, you would have not sinned, but now you see. The Pharisee did not want to admit that Jesus was the Messiah. The miracles Jesus did often pointed conflict for the Pharisees. Could they actually say we witnessed a miracle? Could they say anything about this man who has changed things so much that people are following and listening to his teachings? No, but they could investigate the one who could now see. They questioned this man, his parents and those in the crowds. They did not ask Jesus directly at all. They didn't go up to Jesus and said, Jesus, did you heal this man? No, they did not do that. But when they asked, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus answered well. A reading from Luke 24 occurs after Jesus' resurrection, and he appears to the disciples. This is Luke's version of what happened that time. Jesus wants them to touch him and see him and experience that he is truly alive he also has some fish burgers after he was hungry to prove that he was alive he needed something to eat to sustain himself then he spoke and one of the things jesus said and it's not recorded in the book of john but here in luke jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures he wanted them to know that his death and resurrection was prophesied years before and what it meant and will mean for generations to come. And this is the most significant miracle which suspended time. And all of God's laws of life and death were thrown away. Jesus is alive. Jesus died and rose again. That's Jesus' Easter miracle. And that's why, as Christian followers and believers, we can't leave it contained in ourselves. We need to be witnesses to the story, like John recorded in the first letter. John witnessed the miracles of Jesus, and he felt it necessary in his heart. He had to go tell somebody else. We are God's children, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. He was so excited about it. When Christ becomes known, we're going to be just like him. That's what we're trying to do, one step at a time, be like Jesus. 
And amazingly enough, our eyes will be opened again and again. Our eyes will be able to see Christ if we have faith. Our eyes will be opened again. Our minds will be understanding what those scriptures are all about. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but when we see Christ, we will see him for who he is. Our Savior, the Son of God, Jesus. And we know, when, when this happens, it will be a miracle for each one of us in many ways because it will be our understanding made new because of God's love for us and the gift of God's grace. This is God's love for us, shown to us in miracles. I'm going to sing a song for you at this time. I don't always sing a song, but I'm going to sing this one because it really talks about what it means to miracles. And it's a song called uh, It Took a Miracle, and it's by John W. Peterson. <coughs> I'll be right there at the piano. I need a drink first. I'd ask that you just prayerfully sing it. Sing along with me. Prayerfully share the words.
When you need Jesus, he's there. When Jesus needs you, the question is, are you? Are you there? This is a tough question to ask as we strive to grow in grace and hope with our brothers and sisters in faith. But we ask this question because God knows that we are in need of sharing the strength, courage, and love that we receive from one another and that we receive from God. And this is what we are called to do as a church, to share with one another the people we call family. God's gift to us is Jesus' son who died and rose for our sake. But what is your gift to the church this day? Are you answering Christ's call to serve? Let us think on this as we pray together. God's, your gift to us is Jesus who died and rose again for our sake. Help us, O oh God, to understand what this means for us. Help us to reach out so that we may forgive others and give to us the gift of new life. Bless these gifts we offer in praise and thanksgiving. Bless these gifts as we share with one another our hope and love. We ask in Christ's name, amen. And let us stand as we dedicate our offering in faith and in gratitude and in trust. be seated because in these moments we come before God we share as God's family in faith let us pray God of grace and love this week your creation showed us a marvel spectacle of the sun and the moon and the born the birds lining up and swarming around and creating something so awe-filled and wonderful it is difficult for us to articulate but when we experience the solar eclipse, we are definitely called to believe. We're so small in this universe, and yet you call us to be one with you in faith and in hope. Even though we cannot see you, the creation of your hands is truly miraculous. You've shown us anew that you are God, and we praise you and thank you for this amazing experience. We also thank you, God, for the gift that we receive through the Wototo Children's Choir. For the people who are present, who are blessed by the a joy and wonder and hope that these children and their helpers, their leaders, their aunties and uncles shared with us. That there are better days ahead. We give thanks, O oh God. And we ask for your blessing upon them as they continue to share this message as they tour our country. We pray this day and thank you for Christ's resurrection, which offers us hope, healing, and opportunity to experience real joy. Help us to feel the joy of Jesus as we seek to grow in understanding and faith. We thank you for Jesus' Easter miracle, rising to new life after dying. Help us to understand what this miracle means as we hear stories of Jesus healing a man from blind from birth. He could see again, God. Even though we cannot take mud and help the blind to see, only Christ could and did. But this man was born in order that others would come to believe as Jesus in Jesus as Messiah. Help us to see you for who you are and may be in our time. Help us to know you and when we cannot see our way to bring healing. Help us to see with new eyes and to offer hope. 
We remember many people who are in need at this time. We think about people needing hope around the world. We pray for peacemakers who are facing those who are shouting in times of trouble and not looking to look for peace, but to continue to battle in war. We pray for people of Ukraine and Russia, also for Palestine, Gaza, Israel. And we pray for people seeking hope and a way to live and prosper as they seek support with basic necessities of life. We continue to pray, O oh God, for the many people who need to be healed, made whole in Christ. We also pray for those whom we care for and love as they face difficult days. Catherine, Leslie Burney, Doug Renwick. We pray for your healing and loving hand upon them all. And we continue to pray for those who are mourning. Mourning the death of loved ones that they know from this church family, but also from the city for many people have died in recent weeks. Help us to understand what Jesus' Easter miracle means to us and can make wonder, us, wonder about us with creation. Help us to understand what we see and experience, what it means to live your way and to marvel and celebrate the belonging to Jesus is a gift that we can experience given to us in Christ so that we may live eternally. Hear these our prayers from our hearts, O oh God. And as we share them in this time of silence, Hear our prayer, O oh God. And as we continue to sing, we share together the words of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer. May God grant you peace of mind to calm your troubled hearts. 
May God give you the strength and clarity of mind to find your purpose and walk the path laid out for you. Trust your love, O oh God. We trust your love, O oh God, and know that you will heal us and lead us into following Christ. Just as the sun rises each day against the darker night, may hope rise up and lead us to new life in Christ. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.